guys, it's Hey Sophia and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys 70 different ways that you can build in the 1.13 update aquatic for Minecraft. Each of these ideas is completely unique from the last. I've designed a bunch of things from different types of wallpapers to furniture, things for your pets, things for the garden, but let's get started. So I just want to first start things out by saying if this video looks familiar to you, you might have noticed that the first half of this I actually did back in a video in November. If you haven't, then hello, welcome to my channel. Back in like November last year, 1.13 was originally meant to be only just like a big back update for Minecraft, more the tech cut side of things. They were going to release trapdoors and a few blocks, which is why I did this video at first. But then it was announced earlier this year that 1.14 update aquatic would merge into 1.13. So that's why I'm having to redo this video. Now, if you have seen my first video with the first half, feel free to skip through to about 13 minutes 55 and that's when I start on my purely aquatic update stuff. But for now, I'm going to start on the original side, which has all different types of builds to do with trapdoors, bark blocks, all kinds of things like that. So let's get started. So my first little update here, we're going to go around the outside then to the center. Now I have some acacia trapdoors which I've put along the top of this little hallway ceiling I made here. They make a really good room, like a roof decorator and room divider. Sometimes you see that kind of thing in an old Queenslander home here in Australia, so that's what I've done there. Following up with that, I've also used the acacia trapdoors to make a pergola or an outdoor entertainment area. It looks really nice like these slats of wood that you would tend to see. I've also just put in my pavement down the bottom here some of these smooth stone block which is also new to the 1.13 update. They also are introducing though a smooth sandstone block. Now I really like this as a wallpaper. It looks like that kind of wall that you see that's rendered where they go back and forth, back and forth, crisscross with concrete. So I think it's really good as a feature wall, especially behind a little fireplace like this. Next up is a, it could be a girl's room, could be a boy's room, whatever you would like it to be. I have used the mushroom block, which is also coming to the 1.13 update. You just want to be careful because as soon as you place a block on top and remove it, you get the inside of a mushroom. I think it makes a really, really pretty wallpaper. I've also made a little privacy screen divider here just with some of the jungle oak trapdoors. I think it looks really cool and it's a very cute little room. Now, if you were wanting to do something different with mushroom blocks as well, if you do want to remove the top of them like this, we'll show in a second, it does make like a really nice, there we go, but it does make a really nice kind of like carpet and kind of like painted little decorated thing. It'll be also good for a wallpaper. I've also made some new furniture in here just with the birch trapdoors. I made some chairs and a flower base and I also made a crib using the acacia trapdoors as well. Next up is a office here. Now I've built a little office library to decorate the base of the room. I have used the dark oak trapdoors. Something I really like about old style like offices and libraries is they do have really beautifully decorated wood bases and I think this, this trapdoor is just perfect for that. You can see on the outside it's kind of plain with just the planks but once you have that trapdoor detail it's really nice. The only thing is you want to make sure any furniture you have to put right against the wall because you can't have the trapdoor with the furniture there, but yeah. Next up, I've built a little Japanese room here. Now I've built one in the new update aquatic area as well. But for this one, we're talking about the screen door details, which I have used the jungle oak trapdoors to make a really beautiful oriental screen door. I've also used it to make a window detail there. Just a really simple touch you can use to update some of your more oriental builds. This design is a really simple one that a lot of people were excited about. Basically, if you use the spruce and you put them right next to each other, the spruce trapdoors that is, it's a really, really thin room in a way. I think this would be really great for garden sheds or little outdoor areas, even little tiny log cabins. Even like little outhouses or little battlefield areas, anything that you want a quick little structure, it would be really good. 
I've now got a bathroom design which I have used the smooth sandstone block. I think it looks really nice. It has kind of like a granite texture as well. So I think it looks good for a modern bathroom. We now have a kitchen here. Now for my kitchen, I have used the mushroom stem block to make a cabinetry. The thing I really like about this block is it kind of looks like a wood grain. It's like a nice white wood, like a, more like a wood that's been painted white. And it's got a really great grain texture. Now if you don't want to use that and use an actual wood block, feel like think about using the bark block. I think this is really, really cool, just the plain bark block. It's got a really nice texture around all sides, which means that you don't have to try and hide it by putting a trapdoor at the end or something like that. I've also made a second shelf in my kitchen by using a spruce trapdoor and an iron bar hanging from the ceiling. I've also used some trapdoors in this design here. I have used the birch ones to make some cupboard fronts. I really like the look of the birch trapdoor for cupboard fronts just because I think it has that nice kind of like glass look on the inside in some ways. And I think that's pretty cool. Now this is a very easily built medieval house. Now I've got, I think just the bug blocks in general and the little buttons that are now colored and also these spruce trap doors are all really fantastic for medieval builds. You can choose to have a bug block ending on your build, especially as well the spruce trap doors, which you can see here are fantastic for flower planter beds. You can't see through to the dirt anymore like you could with the trap doors. And I also decorated the build with some different colored buttons, which I've also used for this kind of Spanish inspired build. Now this just adds a nice kind of like pop of texture against the terracotta that I've got as the base for my little house here. Next up though, I have a kind of modern little room here and I have used the pumpkin as a wallpaper. Now this might be a little bit odd, but with the 1.13 update, we now have pumpkins which have no little jack-o'-lantern faces on them. You can still get the jack-o'-lantern ones, but you do have the option of just having a plain pumpkin. I think it makes a really kind of cool textured wallpaper, something a little bit different. It'll be really good for retro builds or anything where you want just a pop of color. Now just like our second design which I use the smooth stone in the base of my like my little floor area, I've also used it here in this little walkway retainer wall. It's going to be a really great block for cities and I recommend using it. Now this design here is a garden one and I've built a little pumpkin patch. The good thing about the pumpkin block is now you don't actually have to fully have a pumpkin growing from a plant to have a pumpkin patch. You can just place them randomly around and make something really quirky, cool for like decorating medievals or castles and stuff like that. Now this is a design I came up with before I got announced that Update Aquatic was around, but you could use some trapdoors to make a really easy fake little fish tank if you did want something still simple and not so much bulky like some of the new Aquatic Update fish tanks are. I've also used some trapdoors to make a little TV cabinet here. Now this one here, just like my little polka dot room, I have a polka dot bed. This is not typically what I do for a bed, but I think it's a really, really cute little quilt cover or doona as we say here in Australia. Now I've got some chairs, just very simple, just little slab there and some trap doors around. Exact same with the spruce one as well. I think they look quite cool as little palace chairs. Again, spruce trap doors and you can make a really cool little thin table. I think this would be great for picnic areas or little outdoor bars, anything like that. I think it's a really great outdoor setting. Now I have reused the polka dot mushroom little block here and I've made a tablecloth cover. I've also made some chairs with the birch. Something else really cool though, oh we need a little item frame, is with the 1.13 you can now place item frames sideways and also flat. So I think flat, they're really good for just making little plates and stuff like that. You can make a little table sitting, put some food in your little item frame plates. And the good thing is, is that people could actually take the food out of the item frame and then eat it. I've used the bug block here, the little acacia one to make some furniture. I think the bug blocks will be really good for bed reds, like bed rests and stuff like that as well. Next up for the acacia is some little trapdoors and I have made a little rabbit hutch. 
I think this is really cool for a rabbit hutch and I kind of styled it off what I had growing up. I couldn't have rabbits but I had guinea pigs and this is what their cages look like. The good thing is is that you can still see in there, you can go in, you can still breed your rabbits and everything like that without having them escape and they have their own little house area which they can go into too. Next up is a very simple dog bed. Now I use these spruce on the inside and decorated with spruce blocks. But feel free to grab something like the quartz. If we just remove the staircases here, go around the outside. I think it makes a really good look like it's been a white bed and then the outside is decorated with wood. It looks very plush, very comfy for a big dog or even a very small kitty who wants a very big bed. Next up, I've got another little simple bed here, just using slabs instead. I've also got a little scratching post, which I've used some of the trap doors to decorate more and the red mushroom block. And I also made a bird cage with the acacia. Now the thing about this is previously you would have to use a slab on top, but now because you have the acacia trap doors, you can just put them on top and it looks like a little cage the whole way around. This next design, also using the acacia trap doors, you can see they're quite popular with me. I have used a cottage, or I built the front of a cottage and made a very cute picket fence with the acacia trap doors. I think it looks really nice and it has that nice thin effect that a picket fence would. You could also decorate the entrance to your little cottage by using some of the wood specific pressure plates. Now these are new in Minecraft as well. There's spruce and dark oak and birch. I think they look really cool as little pavers, especially if you want something different from the plain stone one. Now leading away from our little paved area, I have made a little bridge here, just a little sample one just because I wanted to show. This bridge I have completely built out of spruce trap doors and the thing I like this is it has a really thin effect and it's really quite simple. It looks like a little tiny bridge that you would use to cross a creek or a little tiny river, something like that. I think it's really nice and it has a very nice thin effect. It's not chunky at all like some bridges can be either. Now this is a tree but it's a little bit different because I have actually used the bark book for it. Now the good thing about the bark block is you can have more bark blocks around the base of the tree and then the, like the branches up the top you can still use the normal blocks. That way it just looks a little bit more natural, so this update is also really good for just enhancing the look of your trees. Now we have a path here which I've put in some of the brown mushroom block. I've also put some of the different colored buttons. Now the reason for this is that I like to decorate my dirt paths with stones on the outside which I use the stone button. But maybe if there is a stone on the inside of the pathway it might be covered in the mud. So the idea of this is that by kind of, kind of like color coordinating the block to the button, it looks like the dirt has completely covered over that button and that it looks like a dirty rock if you get me. So just another way you can also be a little bit more detail specific. Up next is a bunch of planter boxes using the new trap doors and the bark blocks and the buttons. You can mix and match them all to make them whatever you would like them to be. You can also use these spruce trap doors to make some really amazing garden planter beds. Now this is going to be fantastic for any type of cottage garden, any type of medieval garden, any type of garden at all where you're wanting some like really rustic looking reusable wood blocks. I think it'll be great. So that is the first part of my video up and done and let's move on to the proper update aquatic update. Now I've got a bunch of water things on the inside and I've got some rooms on the outside so let's start with the rooms first. Now my first room here I've kind of designed as a beachy room. I have used the mushroom stem block as flooring on the floor because it looks like a like a white wood. I've also made some chairs just with the acacia trap doors on the edge and I have got a fish tank with two little tropical fishies in it. Now I'm not showing any more aquariums in this build because I have actually done a video where I showed 25 different realistic fish tanks and some creative ones that you can build in Minecraft. I will link that down below if you're interested in more aquarium builds. I didn't want to show too many because I've already done an update on this. This is a very simple aquarium though and I did it white to fit in with my beachy theme room. Next up is a two part room which I've based on a Japanese kind of bathroom what I saw in Japan when I've been there a couple of times now. The first here is a Japanese toilet. Now something cool about Update Aquatic is that you can actually place 
water blocks into staircases and slabs now. So I've made a little kind of like, like a crouch toilet as you would call them in Japan and I just filled it up with some water on the inside. You don't typically have the water unless if it's being flushed. Maybe you'd want to make a really cool redstone thing to look like it flushes into the toilet, but that's up to you. I've also made a little stand here just with some acacia, really cool for like bathroom builds and stuff like that. And inside my bathroom here, I have a bubble bath. Now you might be wondering how I've done this and it's very simple. All you want to be using is some soul sand at the bottom and you will just bubble up and down like this. Now if it is too much for you, you can put some slabs just like I'm doing here. You will still get some of the bubble particles through. This one is quite a lot still. Sometimes it's very, like barely any. I think it just kind of depends on the mechanics of the game. But I really like it bobbing up and down. Now, you don't want to use magma blocks because magma will pull you under the water and if you touch the magma, you may drown. So I recommend not doing that. Just use soul sand to get that really cool bubbling effect. I don't actually mind seeing the soul sand down at the bottom, especially because it has a really cool little bubble going up and down. It's kind of fun looking as well. But yeah, so bubble baths are a really cool addition, like a different thing that you can now do. Next up is a bathroom and I have used the Prismarine Staircase, another new addition to Update Aquatic. And I really like the look of this. You can also make some really cool baths with it and also slabs as well. So this one I've made a bubble bath, which I've put my soul sand underneath and then cover the top, there we go. The only thing I also don't like about this kind of thing sometimes is it is very shallow for a bath, which is why I think I don't mind the bubbles being underneath and just seeing the soul sand, but if you do like the look of it, then you can just keep this up there. I've also made a sink here, very easy to do, just three quartz staircases just like this, and I put it against the wall and then just put the water on the inside there. Yeah, so here is a very simple bathroom. Next up is a living room, and for this one I have used the stripped bark block. Now I really really love the stripped bark block, I think it's very modern and just a very smooth looking block, especially for Minecraft, so I use it as a wallpaper in here, in here to add like a really nice feature to the room. I have also built another medieval house though, <laughs> I had to build this because I really like the look of the kelp block. Now the kelp block is a little bit funny looking, it's just like, it's dried seaweed but it really looks great as a roof and also a base for like a shower room or a bathroom or anything like that. In here I built another kitchen which I have used a dark prismarine staircase. I used it as a breakfast bench at the edge there. I've also got some little slabs here, just some shelving. Yeah, I made a little breakfast bar with the dark prismarine. I like the tiled look for it as well, so I think it's really great for kitchens. Next up, I have used the kelp block as a flooring, and I've also got my little quartz sink, just like I had in the bathroom. And I think it's really cool, a nice kind of modern look as well, using the kelp for the tiles on the floor. The good thing is like with the roof as well, it looks more striped down, but when it's in a tile format and you're looking down, it's got a nice like tile shape, so it looks like the grout in between all the tiles, so I think it's really nice. We have another kitchen now, which I have used the stripped oak block, well the stripped birch block. The only thing about this is you will get the little ring at the end, but I don't think it's really too much of an issue. You can easily cover it up or it just looks nice as it is because it's a nice little texture to the wood. Makes it look more realistic as well. Now here is my second Japanese build. Now the thing I really loved about the introduction of the stripped bark blocks is that you can make the tummy mats with it. Now I think this is really cool. I have built here a traditional tea ceremony room shape, so in Japan when you are looking for a house or anything like that, they'll normally say that a room is like 6 to tummy mats or 5 to tummy mats and that kind of gives people an idea for the shape. So this one is a tea ceremony room where you've got 4 along the outside and one little tiny to tummy mat in the center. So I've just replicated that using the birch bark block, but you can always just build in all different shapes. If you search on Google images like tummy mat room shapes or numbers, it'll come up with the formats of how big different rooms are. Here is my second medieval. No, this would be my third now, wouldn't it? This is my third medieval one. Now this one I have used the stripped dark oak bark block to use my foundations, and I also use the dark prismarine for a roof here. I think the dark prismarine is a really beautiful roof cover 
It kind of looks like copper. I've also got on the inside some item frames, which I use the stripped buck birch block. And I really like it because when you put an item frame on, it looks like the natural color matches the item frame, like the frame color. So it looks like a really natural wood frame now. It kind of matches perfectly, but yeah. This is what I call my strawberries and cream room. I have used the jungle stripped bark block block and I've also used the birch stripped bark block to make a really cool little crisscross flooring. Now it wouldn't work sideways or with the normal blocks but with this one it's really really pretty. I think it's just nice and light enough that it has a nice pink hue to it. So that's why I call this my strawberry and cream room. I just use the terracotta on the side, the white one, to give that little bit of a pink tint. So it's not too bright in color, but enough that it's really pretty. In this room here, I have used the dead coral block to make my wallpaper. Now, the thing about the coral is that you could put the color one as a wallpaper, but it has to be touching water, otherwise it dies off. I just don't see the point in using it for creative building if it has to touch water. I I think that's too much of a hassle, but I think it makes a really great modern wallpaper as well as like flooring and stuff like that. So with my flooring, I have used the stripped dark oak for my flooring in here to have a really beautiful modern floor color. I've also used the prismarine slabs to make a little stick, like a little cover for my fireplace and I used the dead coral to make a rug. Next up though, we're going to start looking into the center area and we're going to start talking about some of the water features of the game and also a couple of furniture type things. First up is a little seating here which I have used the stripped dark oak block for my furniture table. I think it's a really nice look. Also some item frames and some simple chairs with trapdoors. Next up though is my first water thing. Now I've got a little wharf here just to show. The good thing about the 1.13 as well as staircases and slabs being able to be in water, you can also put fence posts. They will completely blend in with the water which is really really great. So now you can easily make wharfs or anything like that. Before it used to have to be a struggle because you would have these air blocks but now you don't have that issue. Now I have built a water elevator here which I have done up and down. So for up you have the soul sand and then go down, you've got the magma dragging you down. Very simple and really quick and easy and it's quite fast as well. Mine seems to be a little bit funny at the moment but it should hopefully be fixed once the update comes out. I have also made a hot tub out here just like the bath. I've got a hole down the bottom but you really really bubble. Now if you did want to actually sit in there just feel free to put some slabs so you're not bubbling around as much and you're more so just crouching around in your little hot tub. This is a really great way though to have a different area to your pool. You could have the hot tub coming off the pools like connected to it and that way you can tell this is the hot tub and this is the pool. I have also used the dried kelp block here for my pool. Very simple and again it looks like a tile so I think it's also great for oh what have I done there but it also is really great for a pool tile. Some pools do use tiles on the inside as well so I think it's really versatile this kelp block and you can use it in lots of ways. Next up I have built a pool which actually kind of replicates the pool that I grew up in at my mum's house. Now the cool thing about the water mechanics is now you can have little sitting areas in your pool and little slopes. So at my pool at my mum's it sloped down into three different areas and there will seats around the side and a little rock water portfolio like this. So it's kind of cool now you can have like walk slowly into your pool or you can go sit in certain areas and you can have the effect of it sloping down a lot more easier than you used to. Next up is a pathway using a bunch of the dead coral blocks. I think it's really cool to have this nice texture. You could also mix in some cobblestone. I tried to keep it basically mostly coral because they're kind of like a, I don't know if you agree, but kind of like a yellowy hue to the gray. So it's very hard to mix it with some of the other stone type of blocks in Minecraft. So I tried to keep it mostly coral with a few others in there. I've also built here a drain. Now this might seem a little bit odd, but I really like using drains for cities and to make little mysterious areas. Before you used to have the gap there, but now you can, like I said, place your water. So you can now make some really realistic drains, which you could place under bridges, at the bases of towns and the mountains. Create some cool little secret ways to get up into your city. 
Now this here is a natural pool, which I've also got on the inside some slabs for like at the base of it rocks and staircases as well. I've also got some little fishies, which of course fish are coming to update 1.13 in Minecraft. I've also decorated the bottom with a mixture of kelp and seagrass. The only thing you want to know about kelp and seagrass is it does need two blocks deep of water to actually be placed. So you will need to make your, your like pond or anything like that at least two blocks. Next up is a very simple staircase which I just used a bunch of the slab and staircase prismarine blocks as well and then decorated the sides with the stripped spruce block. I think it's really really pretty and nice. And finally my final little bit I thought it'd be good to finish on a bit of water. I have made a water slide. Now I've made water slides once or twice before but before you had to use purely full size blocks you couldn't use slabs or staircases. Now I've got my water coming out of a staircase and you slide down. Oh, there we go. Very simple and very cool to do. But there you go you guys. There is 70 different ways to build in 1.13 update aquatic in Minecraft. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you did. Comment down below what's the one thing you are most looking forward to with the new 1.13 update in Minecraft. I think mine is probably the aquariums and the fish tanks because I'm a big pet person in Minecraft and I'm also looking forward to a lot of the interior designing and a lot of the water mechanics. But like always guys, thank you so much for watching my video today. Thank you!